Much respect, Fowl. This is another recording of the Minister's Red Pill Diaries. I am the Naturalist Minister, the Nkatla of Bafut, Nkatwi Fokwambe, the Initiator of the Ministry of Spiritology and Director of the Association for Cultural Awareness. And we want to dive directly into our topic for this particular recording. We're going to be talking about Bill Gates and Melinda Gates separating, man. I mean, I mean divorce. 27 years, you know, the news came out Monday, uh, specifically May 3rd, for the record, uh, Melinda is what we found out is the actual individual who went and filed for the divorce. And I mean, from reports that I'm getting into, this has been a long time coming. This has been coming since March, actually. Um, a Fox News report, which was written by Stephanie Nolasco, carrying the caption, Bill and Melinda Gates divorce is not a friendly split, sources allege, a long time in the making, just came out yesterday. And um, in that article, I was able to actually discover that Melinda has part partnered in an equity challenge with Mackenzie Scott, the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon.com. I mean, get this. So Melinda is getting into partnership to do business with Jeff Bezos, ex-wife Mackenzie Scott. I mean, you see billionaire women now divorcing, joining together to do business. I mean, my people, <laughs> This is going to be a juicy Red Pill Diaries discussion because I'm just going to be real frank with a lot of my analysis, which is what Red Pill discussion is about. It's just like open your eyes to this. I'm not going to hate on Bill. I'm not going to hate on Melinda. But I want us to really draw some lessons from this in an African Red Pill context. You know, like I say, we have to culturally context Red Pill knowledge for Africa because this is not MGTOW. This is not men going their own way in as far as, you know, us giving that protocol and dimension that men should just always damn the situation with a woman because, like I say, that's not culturally context for Africa, truthfully. We even got polygamy over here. And, I mean, I'm going to land on that aspect, which, I mean, yeah, I'm seeing that even in the relationship that we're going to draw out with Bill and Melinda and another woman and Winblad because truthfully my people this is these are the details of the divorce now that I'm giving you you see it because from another article I was able to read right there was a gentleman called uh, Walter Isaacson who wrote an article for Newsweek back in 1987 which you know he personally interviewed uh, Mr. Gates right and they were just discussing and you know Bill Gates essentially gave him some internal details about his personal life and it was revealed to him that he had been interacting with a woman named Anne Winblad as early as 1984, who is a well-noted software entrepreneur and venture capitalist. Uh, she's actually the director of a company called Hummer Winblad Venture Partners. You see it. And I mean... It intellectually would build, they're like birds of a feather, you know, they're basically computer science nerds, really. And um, when we got that information from Mr. Isaacson's article from Newsweek, and like I said, Newsweek, Fox, Fox News, this, these are credible news sources. This is not hearsay, hearsay. These are people who are inside the loop in these people's private lives, though they want to keep a lot of this information private, right? So it's like, we find out now that Mr. Gates had this relationship with Anne Winblad back in 1984, but this is the reality of the situation now, you see it, because there's another article I was able to look at um, from the New York Post, right, and it started to reveal to us that when Mr. Gates got married to Melinda in 1994, there was actually like, you know, an informal agreement between them that he could still continue to have a relationship with Madame Winblad. Now, let's follow the history statistics and, you know, like I say, when we come to Ministry of Spiritology, we look a lot at details and facts, right? Because Bill Gates married Melinda in 1987, right? I mean, not 1987, 1994, but he met her in 1987. They started dating in 1987 because that's the year she graduated from Duke with her MBA, and they started working at Microsoft as the product manager. So, I mean, she, she, she leaves school, the MBA, you know, gets into a good job, marries the boss. You get it. And then now it's like she has to fit into his lifestyle, really, my people. Because like I'm saying, dude's already on point. He's already got his money. He's already settled. So it's like, come into my world. She says, okay, I'll come into my world. But you'll come into my world on this condition. You can have everything, but there's a woman I used to know who we're still going to be friends. I hope that that's okay. 
Melinda says that's that's okay, or it seems like it's okay. Was it okay, Melinda, or was it just hypergamy that you just wanted to get your pay? Because now, okay, Melinda's all in the marriage. 94. 96, now she gets pregnant with the first kid, Jennifer. She now comes to Bill and she's like, oh man, you know that now that I'm having my first child, I would like to step back from work so that I can raise the family right. And you know, from what she's actually revealed in an article she was interviewed concerning her book, because she actually wrote a book called The Moment of Lift, How Empowering Women Changes the World. It was published in 2019. And of course, in being interviewed for this book, she actually explained that Bill approached her and he was like, you know, he was surprised. Are you sure this is what you want to do? I know you're a queer orange woman. The money's there. I'm Bill Gates. You could give birth, wean. The child could be with a nanny and you're still active. She's like, no, I want to handle the maternal call in me, essentially. He's like, okay, go handle, handle that baby. And then now when she gets into that position now, when you start to go through this article, it's really her writing this book and articles and interviews that she actually had that bring out some of the grievances underlying that she had in the marriage. And this is at 2019, she's publishing this book. She's been married since 1994. Now, people, we need to understand that, um, you know, in 2000, that's actually when they made the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, right? So it's like Bill saw that she was at home and not being career active. They probably had tension in the house that made this point come out. So now it's like, okay, let's make this foundation get you back into, you know, the career world, the career path. I know that that's you. That's why you ain't got the MBA, everything. Because this is the trouble now with the working class woman who feels she's empowered. I want you all to really feel this. This is the issue that they're creating amongst themselves. It really didn't have a lot to do with dude. He was transparent in everything, even with his mutual marriage agreement. Before this article from Fox is saying that even the kids are upset with him because the kids are going to be born after the fact that him and the mom negotiated the terms of the marriage. They're not going to understand that this was an agreement I had with you and your mom, even if you hear me going to go and see Mrs. Winblad and your mom trips about it sometimes and then uses that to backfire. Like in her, her interview, she writes in her book that, um, you know, she had to come to terms with some of her struggles as being, you know, a stay-at-home mom married to, you know, one of the richest men in the world. And what are some of her grievances and complaints? Like, sometimes I found myself washing the dishes alone 10 to 15 minutes after everyone else had gone to sleep. Okay, why didn't you all just, I mean, you married into wealth. Why didn't you get you a maid? You know, it's like, is this a, really a grievance? You know, oh, what are her grievances? Like, okay, you know, I had to get Bill to agree to start taking Jennifer and the children to school because, you know, it's like, it, 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 these are things that, listen to what she actually says in her contextualization of it. I really get this point into this recording. She came up with a calculation where she says that um, the average married woman works an additional 90 minutes of work per day, which could be paid labor specifically. And um, she cites things like this dishwashing, you know, having to do laundry, having to cook, because, you know, you can, you can always eat out, of course, and, you know, having to carpool children, transportation, their drivers who can do that. So 90 minutes of a woman's day who is married are dedicated towards domestic chores, which she could be paid for. And it's compromising and cheating the woman. That's what she's indirectly trying to bring out. And she's trying to hint that what she actually concludes in this book and in these articles is that if a woman lives a long lifespan of, let's say, 100 years, she's going to work like 30% of her life. You know, and I mean, I mean, I really broke down the statistics, just really looked at this because I was like, whoa. But no, if it's 90 minutes per day, that's 365 days a year, right? That's 32,850 minutes. You divide that by 60 minutes, you get 50 547.5 hours. You divide that by 24 hours per day, you get 22.8125 days per year. Now you multiply that times 75, if the average woman would live to be 75 years old, and then you come out with something like uh, uh, 1,710.9375 days. If you divide that now by 365, you only get 4.687 years. Now this is true. That is the statistics you shouldn't be talking. You should be talking about. But I'm going to be honest. This is the trouble with the radical feminism ideology and the way it tries to polarize to give the impression that men are getting away with something that is, is disenfranchising women. Because the man too, also, if he wants to sit down and do some calculations about how he has to take care of the family or concentrate on just always paying the rent or being given that obligation that he is the sole breadwinner, 
You get it. Even in situations where women are working, the man still is the one who is always regarded as being responsible for a lot of the upkeep in the house. That's just the simple fact. When you want to ask a woman, she'll be like, oh, it's my money. Let's just be honest, especially in our African context. So this situation, it's just silly. I'll be honest. It's really silly. Because she cooks and drums all this up and explains that, you know, as she now was able even to start doing traveling. You know, she went to Africa, she went to Malawi, she went to Bangladesh. She saw, you know, women poorer than her, living in complicated situations where she started to realize that, um, you know, poverty is not being able to protect your family. And these women were compromised because um, if they had things like, you know, reproductive rights protection, if they had access to birth control to protect them from not having children when they didn't want to. You get it, so that they can deal with what she called, I mean, you know, the, the, the burdens of parenting. Remember, in, in 96, this woman who got pregnant and told her husband she wants to go and take care of the kids. I mean, truthfully, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, nice. I'm not going to hate on you, Bill. I'm not going to try and put all your private stuff out there. I'm just looking at what privately has been put out there. But truthfully, your wife now in 2015 founded a company called Pivotal Ventures. Right. And it's related to all this activity that she did traveling and seeing these women in these, you know, disempowered situations where now she wants to divorce you, take a portion of your millions to invest in, you know, this her NGO, essentially. And that's good. I support all that. But this is what is so ironic about it. You see, while she's calling her NGO Pivotal Ventures in 2015, and you're seeing now that you're having all these marital conflict in your home with your wife and the issue of Anne Winblad also having a company by the name of Hummer Winblad Venture Partners. Venture Partners, your wife is now making, of course, her Pivotal Ventures. Man, I'm seeing what happened in your marriage. And as I'm running out of time, I don't want to make this more than five minutes. I'm just going to drop on it, my people, so that we can start getting the lessons learned from the situation that Mr. Gates went into. You see it? Mr. Gates actually was in love with two women. From the article that I was able to read from Fox News, it seemed that actually he married Melinda specifically because Madame Winblad, as a, as, as, a, I mean, as a software entrepreneur, she wasn't ready for married at that time. She wasn't ready for marriage at that time. But this is the man who wanted to get married, so he married Melinda. But he still loved Anne, and he loved Melinda. So if he was able to have married both of them, I'm going to pause there and smile in the corner of my chin because we're bringing this back to the African cultural context of why polygamy even actually exists. And if it existed, it would have safeguarded this situation. Truthfully, my people, I'm not bringing this to be like a quirk or to play a game or nothing. I'm that serious about ministry of spiritology upholding the naturalist right of the man and woman to practice polygamy. And we used to have saying in our sexual freedom teachings, we explain mature adults consenting as our prime principle word of thought. These were mature adults consenting. They wouldn't have this conflict right now. Now, Melinda, after 27 years of marriage, faced with, you know, the animosities of knowing that she accepted Bill could go and hang out with the girlfriend. You know, from what they write in the articles, they make it seem like they just play putt-putt golf and hang glide and talk about science. But it's red pill, y'all. You know they knocking the boots, man. And Melinda's not going to be happy about that, even though she accepted it. You don't know she's having side flings on the side. She's being quiet, stacking her millions to go get involved in all of that. But all of this now comes down to the fact that Melinda now is divorcing Bill as a career move. I'm just going to say it blatantly. You see, this is her career opportunity to step back with her own set of millions, set up her company, go and work with, with Mackenzie Scott and all these other rich women now who have taken this dynamics on the world now that there is a hot I'm going to say this. There's a hot maternal, I want to call it maternal, uh, we shouldn't say maternal secession. That's another African context. But it is an uh, agenda to restore matrilinealism. You see it. The feminists have antagonized the idea of patrilinealism. And now indirectly, they're fighting to raise this idea of matrilinealism. So they need to actually empower a cross-section of women who have this ideology with enough finances that they can now start to engage in sponsoring full-time. I mean, these are people who put about $125 billion into COVID-19 in just a year. They've, they've been funding, I mean, truthfully, they say that Gates Foundation practically helped eradicate polio. So Melinda, truthfully, kudos. But you and Kim Kardashian giving all these women this logic that marriages can be, you know, just dissected and torn apart because you all are on this hypergamy thing. It's not cool. The whole radical feminism agenda is not cool because the impression now is that human beings, men and women, actually can't have fruitful marriages. 
because of all of this you know, confusion to see. And I, I respect the man Bill Gates. You know, Melinda in an interview, she complained that one day before they got married, she came into a room. Bill had the whiteboard up. He was assessing the pros and cons of the marriage. That's just an intellectual man finding out how he's got to go forward. Y'all always like this baby, baby, I love you mentality that a man should be blind, a woman should be blind. People should go into marriage and relationships without thinking rationally about what they're doing. And that's why a lot of y'all hate red pill. You even dislike the MGTOW movement because its core priority is for a man to be on his purpose and look at his relationships rationally. Women don't like that. When a man thinks that, you know what, when I take you out to eat, maybe you're not even actually interested in me because before I had to even call you several times and realize that, you know, you, you weren't really feeling me, but you finally did it. Maybe you just wanted to get a meal. And I mean, it, all of those tricks that you women know that you play, that you pretend, that you set a man up, that you go out, get drunk, come back to a dude's house, sleep with them. And then when it, it turns out that maybe your boyfriend or husband finds out, you go and accuse the man of rape, all of those types of things, or his girlfriend attacks you. Those, it, it's crazy. This toxic femininity. Melinda's even manifesting it, but in, in, in a lower sense degree. And she's got his kids angry. And she's going to cut her half the dough and go. Of course, you know, they say it's not going to affect the Belil and Melinda Gates Foundation. You know, they got a lot of funds invested there. And naturally, by NGO laws, I know that since they're donating the funds and they're not the owners of it, she can't actually go after the money that he's putting there. And it's wise even that he does donate his money back into it philanthropically because he can't register earnings when they have to start doing divorce calculations for alimony and stuff. So what he's done, the situation they're in is very technical legally. That's why they're the ones who had to draft their own divorce um, agreement and give it to the court. The court's not going to impose on them. These people, they, they were so organized in their marriage, the court can't even impose. So these are some of the lessons we can start to take from this, my people, truthfully, because I mean, it's like I'm going to run a little bit above 15 minutes. They want to. We'll crunch it under the 20 like we always do. But these lessons do need to get out to my people. Truthfully, this is very important. Because you see that even if she got into marriage and started to develop these conflicts, which I mean, she knew about, which are even small grievances. What we do have to take away from it is that she did come into the company. She did want to support Bill. She helped him at least to the extent that he was able to start the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, even though it was already going to be his funds anyway. But she didn't come in with this whole mentality of trying to break this man the way that a lot of these other women did, because right from the start, she did accept the fact that he could bring in this, his original girlfriend who he had had deep sentimental attachment to. So I'm not just going to come out there and be shooting bullets, throwing out and cursing at everybody. No, you can't do that. And I think that if we hold this aspect now of polygamy truly as the key, let me give a shout out to you, Madame Kuhn, you know, encouraging polygamy, polygamy platform out there in Cameroon, West Africa. You know, truthfully, I want to give a shout out to y'all and that initiative. And, you know, even the initiatives in the U.S., you know, wherever you are, U.K., I'm seeing a lot of, you know, polygyny, even if it's polyandry. I know some people don't want to support that. But polygamy now is coming back, even if it's in the form of polyandry, because we have a lot of people in African American and you know descendant African descendants communities, you know, going back to roots. People want to understand this. What is the knowledge in this? What what was the naturalist teaching of this, which was helping us to sustain our communities? You see, you see, a shardy is maybe in a situation where she had a kid out of wedlock, she can't get married, but she meets a king who's with his queen, and they're willing now to bring up into tri-party state. They build on that. When you get into the Islamic tradition, that's what the Islamic tradition even tell you, that a woman who had a child out of wedlock, her entitlement, if she's not easily getting married, is that a man who's married can take her as a polygamous wife. I mean, it's written in the codes. Even in African naturalist traditions, that's how we've always been. So whatever Rome did to stigmatize it, Mr. Gates just got bit by it. And I want us to really take that as one of the lessons that we can learn from this situation. You see it? Because marriage is not guaranteed if you got money. But if you organize it right, it can be stabilized. You see it? Loyalty or fidelity in a marriage does not mean that someone might not have another partner. But it means that it should be all governed within the context of knowingness. So that cheating that y'all be doing, that's out. So if y'all can get some of these points from these people, even though they didn't have their prenuptial agreement, they're still going to separate amicably. It's not about a war. Then I think that we can actually learn from the Bill and Melinda Gates separation and grow on top of that knowledge, my people. Truthfully, I'm not out here advocating that divorce is cool, but I'm saying that we can work with the relationships to avoid divorce using polygamy 
But if it gets to that point, then of course y'all should be able to use this knowledge of being mature, rational people like the Bill and Melinda Gates situation did and come out of it without destroying yourselves. And that requires both of you to build on top of your relationship. So that's where I'm going to drop out on this message. I really hope that you all did get the message. And if you did, make sure you do click like down there. Make sure, of course, you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so that anytime we do drop new content, you will be notified, truthfully, my people. And, of course, make sure you share this video to as many people as possible because this is some rich knowledge. Mr. Gates, Mr. Gates, truthfully, I want to offer you my condolences, truthfully. And Madame Melinda, truthfully, I want to offer you my condolences as well. Anyone who's out there going through divorce separation, truthfully, that shit ain't cool. I'm going to be honest. It is just not cool. Oh, did I say... Okay, well, well, maybe we'll beep it out. But truthfully, my people, it's not, not easy, but it can be if we can work on the communication. And we see that these people tried, but along the way, it just broke down because Melinda just can't handle it. But my African sisters, we know y'all always been strong. We take it back to roots, we'll be all right. So that's why I'm going to drop out, truthfully. Y'all share that video. Make sure you keep up that each one, teach one. I've been that naturalist minister, the Nkala of Buckfoot. Signing out saying peace. Profile. Peace. That's where we are.